Hey there. So I'm doing another basics video in order to show what I think every the knots that every climber should need. And these are knots that you would choose to use in some circumstances or not to use in other circumstances. As well as keep in mind that some of these knots, uh, like two different knots could be used for the same application. But I just wanted to make an end all video to show every knot that you may encounter while climbing as well as any knot that you may choose to use while climbing. So, first thing I wanted to talk about is the figure eight and the figure eight family. If you live in North America, this is the most common knot that you'll use for tying into your harness. So, first step is making the actual figure eight knot. The way how I like to teach it is I hold the rope in one of my hands. You can pull out enough rope starting from your opposite shoulder here. And then with this hand, you twist once towards yourself. See how I twisted that towards myself? and then again towards myself. You should have some twisting in the rope right here. Now I'm going to take the end of the rope in my other hand and put it through the back of that loop. Notice how that's the back of the loop uh, in order of which it's facing me. And let the rope drop and it turns into a figure eight knot right there. Be careful about getting knots like this. That's known as the figure nine knot. That's one too many twists. And so I can fix that by just taking the rope out of one end of the loop. See how it's going towards me now? And I can put it through the back of the loop and get the figure eight. As well as watch out for this knot. Everyone knows this knot. This is the overhand knot. And this is what happens if you get one, two little twists in, uh, before you pass the end through. So you just take the rope out and pass it through one side or the other. You either get the eight knot or fantastic mess. And if you get the mess, try the other way. All right, next step in the figure eight family is going from the figure eight to the figure eight retrace. Figure eight retrace, for those that don't know, is when you pass the rope through your harness and basically build another figure eight on top of this one uh, in order to tie yourself in. So I'll show you that now. Most modern harnesses have a belay loop in the front right here. And then it has these two points right here. These two points that support the belay loop are known as the tie-in points. So you're gonna take the end of the rope and pass it through the bottom one, bring it up through the top loop as well. Notice how I have this little keeper strap right here. Uh, every harness, well, modern harness has a keeper strap that's designed so that way the rope stays on the part of the harness that's meant to have rope on it. So make sure that you actually pass the rope through that keeper strap. I can pull the rope so that way the knot's like an inch or so away from my harness. Now notice how I'm holding the rope, or holding the knot, so that way the rope coming from my harness is going into the right side of the knot. Yeah? So as opposed to the left side right here. We want the rope going to the right side of the knot. When I start the, uh, the retrace of the figure eight, I can put the rope either up through the knot or down through the knot. This is determined by the fact that this line right here is going underneath this line. Yeah, if I flip it around, you can see how this line is going over this one. So in that case, I go down. But since I want the rope going to the right side of the knot, I'm going to put the rope up through. The final step, you can see how there's this really easy way to go through. And then if I push this to the side, there's the harder way. You do want to go through that harder way. I'm going to, once I pass the rope through, making sure it's on the right side of the knot, and then it's going up through the knot. I can pull the rope somewhat tight to the harness. You don't have to pull it uber tight, but just decently close to your harness. And now I'm tracing the eight. See how I'm tracing it? It goes underneath this line, so I'm going to go around and then back down through right here. I'm going to pull it through so that way it's uh, it looks like it's part of the eight, but not so much that that happens because that can cause some problems later on. Now I'm tracing it, see how it goes over these two strands. You never go through, you always go over, or around I should say, and trace it up and then straight up through this spot right here. Yeah, most people will want to push this to the side and then go up on the outside of this strand right here, but you actually just want to follow the path of least resistance and go straight up through. There you go. And then another thing that happens a lot to folks is this 
it looks, uh, it pops up like that. And then that's how you originally tie your knot. What you want to do is just push this down and then pull this strand right here to tighten that up. Yeah? This is the way how you want your knot to look like. This is what we call a clean and well-dressed figure eight. Ways to check that we've tied this knot correctly is you can count up the separate strands of the knot, starting down here, two, four, six, eight, ten. Other side, two, four, six, eight, ten. You do want to check both sides. Another check that's good to make sure that it's clean and well-dressed is look for five sets of parallel lines. And you're just going to count the same ones. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah? One, two, three, four, five. The thing is we want... We don't want any crossing going on. We just want each strand to look parallel. Now, uh, common or the industry practice nowadays, as for tail, which is the amount of rope you have left over from your knot, is you want at least two fists of tail. If you have more, that's not the end of the world, but it's a problem if you have less. So that is the industry standard currently, but many climbing schools and other places, they still want the old standard which is you have to tie a finishing knot above your eight knot. Finishing knot looks something like this. See, usually they want a bit more tail on it, but if you can get some sort of finisher, that's nice. There we go. So what I did there was tied a double overhand above my figure eight. Notes on finishing knots include the fact that you want the knot to be close to the harness or sorry close to the main knot you see how there's barely any space between the main knot and the finishing knot i see a lot of people with finishing knots all the way out to here yeah and then they just got this big loop of rope in this section and that there's a number of problems with that if you're top roping in the gym it can get caught in whatever sort of anchor structure you have above another situation is if you're climbing outside it can get caught and any sort of protection you have. If you're trying to lead climb with that big loop, you can clip it accidentally and then get stuck that way. You, if you're in a rescue situation and you need literally every foot of rope you can get, that wastes a full foot of rope if you tie your knot way out here. As well as it's not doing the purpose that finishing knots are meant for, to do. The idea of finishing knots is to keep your main knot from coming untied. If you have it all the way out here, it's going to eventually slip down and then you have this big loop of rope which will actually help this knot uh, in coming untied. So it, it's really, it's, uh, it's not a bad idea that we moved away from finishing knots, but that's if you're going to tie a finishing knot, bottom line is just keep it close to your main knot, about an inch, no more than two inches away. In order to tie this finishing knot, what I like to do is uh, you have your two lines right here, there's the tail, there's the rope. I pinch the tail, wrap it around both ends, you see both ends right there, and I just wrap it around once. You can see an X that is formed right there, here's the one side, the other side. I like to say go straight up through the X. Yep, make sure that it's not down through the X, otherwise the knot will fall apart. I go straight up through the X and then pull whatever tail you got uh, and make sure to pull it decently tight too. The finishing move that I like to do on my figure eight is something called the Yosemite finish. And this is a bit more of a hot button among the climbing community as to whether you should use it or not. But I like it because it helps keep the rope out of my way and uh, I never get confused with clipping or anything like that. So you'll notice how in the center of the figure eight right here we have the small end and then the longer one and i'm talking about the inner strands here i'm going to take the tail and follow the small strand around trace the longer one down to the bottom of the knot you notice there's this neat little spot right here you can pull apart stuff the rope down and then pull it decently tight again you don't want it you don't want it to be super tight like crank it down because i can loosen up the eight knot but just pull it so that way everything is nice and together. A properly tied Yosemite finish should look like it's part of the figure eight knot. See how that, it looks like it belongs. Other Yosemite finishes that you'll see people doing that aren't quite as good is one they'll just stick it straight back down. Yeah, sometimes they'll pull it super tight like that or sometimes they'll leave it loose, you know. 
other ones, maybe they wrap it the other way around. And uh, it's really, it's what people prefer to do, but uh, I think that a proper Yosemite finish should really look like it's part of the knot. That is more of an opinion, a more stylistic point of view, but that's just the way how I prefer to do it. Right, moving on from figure eight land. Well, actually, let's talk about one more figure eight knot, which is the figure eight on a bite. So the figure eight on a bite can be used if you're tying into a section of rope that isn't the end. This is like the middle of the rope or some part around it. What I can do is just take, put a bend in the rope. We call this a bite in climbing. Go down a bit, give yourself a little bit of room. And I'm just going to tie that figure eight knot again. Yep, I'm bringing it up through and pull it tight. There you go, let's get a different angle on that. So uh, here's my bite of rope. You see how I, I like to bend it down like that. I bring the end around, then straight in through that bite. Now it is very easy to get this knot to be unclean and you do have to go through and mess around with it until it is clean. But essentially you just tied a figure eight uh, follow through only with uh, a section of rope instead of the end. A good brethren to the figure eight on a bite and a knot that's used for many of the same uses as the figure eight on a bite is the overhand on a bite. Guess how you tie this one? If you hadn't seen it already, in the same view, you start with a bite of rope, twist it around once this time, not twice, and then pull it tight. So this knot is, again, used for the exact same purposes as the figure eight on a bite. The only problem is it uh, does get tighter if you weight it, so you got to be a little bit careful about that. And uh, the big advantage of this one is you can load it across like this whereas a figure eight on a bite it does get a bit more dicey if you load it horizontally like this but there aren't many situations where you would actually load a figure eight on a bite in that case but if you if there's a possibility you may want to go to the overhand another knot that's good for being used in the middle of the rope is the butterfly knot so there are two different ways to tie this. One is good without gloves. Uh, start with just a loop of rope. You give it one twist, and then you give it two twists. And then you have to pinch the top of that twist that you made. Bring the loop down underneath, and then in between both those other loops. You gotta pull it tight, and you got a butterfly knot. Yeah, some people call this the alpine butterfly, and it's mainly used in uh, glacier travel. If you want to have uh, stopper knots in between two uh, or more people on your rope in order to cut into the side of a crevasse, people will use this knot for that, as well as a few others, uh, as well as they'll just clip straight into it if they're ever in the middle of a line or walking on a glacier. So this is mainly used by mountaineers. Another way to tie this that uh, some people find being easier or uh, also easier with gloves on is you wrap it around your hand wrap it around go one more wrap and then the third wrap you wrap in between the two then take the one that's furthest to the left pull a bit yeah you fold it over grab these two strands and then put this through there you see, it doesn't take as much dexterity to deal with uh, making this alpine butterfly, but I find with gloves you can pretty much tie it both ways. It's uh, whatever way you prefer to do it. All right, let me check my little cheat sheet here. Stopper knot. All right, so stopper knots are used in rappelling a lot of times, uh, and it's just a knot in the end of your rope. To keep you from repelling off the end. You can also use these while belaying, single pitch belaying. If you're, if there's any worry about lowering your partner off the end of their rope after they let up a pitch, 
do you have a stop or not and this can it can save a lot of people at least one person a year gets lowered off the end of their rope so a good way to tie it is hold uh, the rope in your hand you can support about a foot of tail with your thumb and I like to hold this in my non-dominant hand and what I do is with my dominant hand I grab the end of the rope go over my thumb once go over my thumb twice notice how the second time I uh, looped it over the first loop yeah slow uh, instant replay right here over once over twice crossing over the first one now I can take the end of the rope and start at the base of my thumb don't start at the tip of your thumb start at the base pass the rope up while I take my thumb out there we have a stopper knot it is best if uh, these strands still look like they're crossing after it's tied. It stays a bit tighter, stays a bit longer. And uh, nowadays, everyone wants your stopper knots to be about nine inches or more. You don't want like, you know, a meter of rope from your stopper knot, but having a decent tail really helps out in keeping the knot there longer, especially if you're gonna throw them on repel. All right. The last family of knots I want to talk about are all the bowline knots. Now again, it's not common to use a bowline in America for a, a variety of reasons. Um, it was a bit more common back in the old, back in the old days, in the 70s or so. Uh, a lot of folks in Europe still use bowlines, and I've seen a bunch of different types of bowlines, but uh, I just want to go over the basics. So bowline is a knot that can be used to tie into your harness for climbing. Uh, the single bowline is the one that everyone knows, every sailor knows at least. A good way to tie it is go ahead and pass the rope up through your harness. And then I'm going to start by weaving the ropes like this. You guys all know this from tying your shoes. And then if you bend the long rope over in a loop, you can see how I made a loop. And then I pass the rope around and then back through again. And there we go. Now I have my single bowline. One rod I like to use, if I use a bowline with, with climbing, I prefer to use the double bowline. So starts the same way. I pass the rope through my harness a decent amount, and then I have to make the loops. So I make the loop one way. Notice how I make two loops going the same direction. Whenever I tie bowlines, I always tie the loops the same direction. See, there we go. And I'm going to take my rope and go up through the loops, hold it sort of tight, go around the main rope, and then back down through the two loops. And then you just gotta pull it and adjust it a little bit to get it sitting right. And there we have a double bowline. That is what I definitely prefer to use. Here you go. Let's do instant replay from my point of view. So I make one loop, and then I make two loops, and up goes around the main rope and then back down. All right, ways to, you do, it is very re recommended to put a finishing knot on a bowlin. One of the causes of uh, accidents with the bowlin is people tying it too loose and then it can come untied really easily. So a good stop, or like the classic way is just like the figure eight. We wrap it around a couple times Pass the end, if I had enough, there we go. Pass the end down through the rope. And you notice how I tied it on this side, uh, closer to my harness. So that is a good way to tie off your bowline. I prefer getting the rope up and onto the main strand, so that way I, my bowline has more freedom to move on my harness. A lot of people well, on the back of the bowline, just pass this end straight up through. Yeah. And then they will wrap it around the main strand. Either one or two loops, as long as it's tight, that's really all that matters. And so a lot of people will get away with doing that. Me personally, I'm a Yosemite finish guy, so I like to do Yosemite finishes. And it isn't too different from just going straight up through. I'm going to follow this rope going straight up through. So wrap it around, come through my two loops, and then go straight up through. There you go, you see it's not all that different, but that extra twist does add a, enough friction that it can 
stay where it's at. And then as for tail, I just make sure that I have at least two fists of tail or a dollar bill's length, however way you want to think about it. Bolins are very useful when you are uh, perhaps lead climbing and projecting a route that you know you're going to fall on a whole lot. Because these knots, the big advantage between the bowline and the figure eight is that these are really easy to untie after falling a whole lot on them or having excessive loads. If you're going to do some hauling with like a 200 pound haul bag on a big wall, it might be worth tying it in with a bowline so that way it's easier to untie the rope afterwards. So these are all the knots that I feel like any climber should know and any climber would need to know for any situation. Keep in mind, again, the, a lot of these knots can be used for a variety of different things, and a lot of these knots uh, could be in substitute of other knots. It's just good to have a good amount of knowledge with knots to understand all of them, understand the different properties, so that way you can choose the right knot for the right application. And I wanted to make a video in order to put all these knots in one particular place so that way now you have a resource to go back through and look at all the different knots you would need to know as a climber. So, thanks for watching.